hey guys this is E with scrapbooking with me and I promised that I would do a little demo on the watercolor pens and the little paper pad that you got in your April kit I think everybody should have their kit by now or at least they will have it in the next day or so hopefully everybody's already got it and they were a little bit late for April and it's simply because of the coronavirus I mean we just couldn't get everything shipped out because we couldn't get shipments in we couldn't get all of our supplies in so we couldn't get anything shipped out until later on in the month so I hope everybody has got their kits by now and everybody is okay with that we that was beyond our control we didn't have any control over it so you got in your kit um, a royal watercolor paper pad artist pad has 15 sheets in it mine you can see is well loved I've used mine quite a bit and I just stamped out this little image here and this is one of the Tim Holtz stamps let's see which one it is it's the delusions it's not Tim Holtz this is from Diane Rivoli Rivoli I cannot say her name Rivoli I think anyway uh, it's called further around the edge a ranger one so I just stamped this out I like to stamp this out color it and then I cut it out and I can use it on my projects now some of you may have got the royal and some of you may have got another color there it should be the same amount of pins in it it's just that they didn't have enough of one so we had to supplement with another um, this one has a good range it has some greens and yellows and orange reds purple pink blues and then it has a nice black and a nice brown so on this we're going to use the green we're going to use the dark green the light green and then a yellow now you can do watercolor pencils a lot of different ways you can either lay the color down on your project or you can take your your paintbrush and just pick a little bit of color off of the tip and then put it down it doesn't matter either way whichever way it feels like it's easiest for you is what you do um, let's just do this one right here and I'm just gonna start by laying down some of that dark green now you can also wet your pad first if you want there's a lot of different ways and everybody does their watercoloring a little bit different so you just find the way that it's easiest for you then we're going to go right into that one and just kind of blend up with the lighter green like that and then for the tip I'm going to go in with some yellow and just kind of blend that up now this is what it looks like before we add water to it I think it looks pretty good before we add water to it but we're going to take our brush and just wet it a little bit I'm not going to have it real wet I just want a little water on there and then I'm just going to start kind of pulling those colors toward the top of the leaf or toward the tip of the leaf just kind of pull them all in there and I'm just wetting that leaf and I don't I don't mind on this one if I go on the outside because I'm going to be cutting it out but if you don't want to go out of your image then that's fine now while that's wet I'm going to go back in and I'm going to lay a little bit more color down Now you can see how easy that green catches since that paper is wet now this is a cold pressed paper so it's a little bit bumpy you see how how that green catches a lot more vibrant when the paper is already wet Oops, I think I actually turned those colors around a little bit so let's try to remedy that sometimes when I'm talking can't figure out what I'm doing we'll fix it we'll put some yellow in here a good bit of yellow and kind of tone that down all right and then we're just gonna go back with that wet brush with my brush a little bit more and just pull those colors out and blend them now let me grab the right one we're going to grab this dark again and I'm going to go right at the bottom 
And then this leaf has a little place over here that's kind of turned back. I'm going to go there. I'm going to darken this bottom up a little bit more since I actually changed my colors up there. There we go. And there is a leaf. So we'll do another. And I like to lay my dark color down first. And I like to go in on dry paper. It may be easier for you to go in on wet paper. It doesn't matter. You can do either one. And the color lays down on these. These are not the most expensive watercolor pencils you can get. Um, I like to give you a choice to just try out the product and see if it's something that you might like to, to invest in. For you to just give it a try. You know, it may be your thing and it may not be your thing. It may be something that you want to invest a little more money in and it may not be. But this way you get to try it to see if you like it. Now, even though these are not the most expensive watercolor pencils, they seem to, to blend very well. They go on easy. So I'm not having any problem with that. So you can see that you just keep kind of blending it and you put, you know, different layers and different uh, colors on there so that it all looks real. It doesn't look like it's just one flat leaf. Put a little bit of water right there. And then we're going to go back in with this dark one because that leaf is kind of turned back there. And I'm going to go around the bottom with the dark again. Then we'll bring this one in, the lighter, and just kind of blend it up. And then the yellow. And I'm not a professional at this, by no means. So if I can do this, you can do this. Anybody can. I've just watched, I love watching Lindsay, uh, the frugal crafter. I watch her a lot, and I have for years. She has been a, on our design team before years ago. I like watching her, so, you know, I just watch her and... I pick up little tips and tricks here and there from her. All right, now I'm going to wet a petal first, and then we'll see if that's what you would rather do is to wet the petal first. And I'm just wetting in that petal. I'm not going to wet outside the petal. All right, then we're going to see how quick it grabs that watercolor. It grabs to me. It grabs it a little bit too quick. I I like to have that option to um, give it a little bit, <laughs> give it a little bit of, of time. I think it kind of scares me sometimes when it grabs it real quick. I'm afraid it's gonna saturate my whole petal with one color, and I'm not gonna be able to blend things out. So, but it's like I said, it's whatever, whichever way you would rather do it. Okay, now I am going to kind of dry my brush off just a tiny bit, and then I'm just going to go back over that and kind of smooth that out a little bit, and I'm going to wipe my brush. See, I don't like my blending as well on this one as I do this one. Now that's me. Some people do better when they wet their paper first, but um, for me... I don't do as well. Maybe it's because I'm a little heavy handed <laughs> when I color. Now we'll do a different technique and this one where you can just take the color directly off of your pencil onto your brush and then go onto the piece.
And then I like to wash that one off. And then we'll take a little bit of the lighter green. And this may be the option that you had rather do because you have a little bit more control of what goes on your paper. All right, then we're gonna wash the brush off again. And then I'm just gonna go onto the yellow. I'm just pulling a little bit of that paint off of the end. I said paint, I meant color. You guys know what I'm talking about. And then you've got a light leaf there, but you can always go back. So go back and pull some of your dark color and go back in at the bottom. And you want to make sure that your the bottom of your leaf is the darkest because this up here is going to be more like what the sunshine is going to see. Then we're going to go in with the light again. And you start the light in that dark and just kind of pull it upward so that you can blend them together. And then we'll go back with the yellow. And again, you start in that green and just kind of pull that yellow up okay so there is that one so it's it's whichever one that you like which the way that it's easiest for you to color this may be easier for you and if it is then do that way there is no right and wrong way to do this it's the way that you're most comfortable with Sometimes, depending on what paper you're using, it blends out better by doing this method. Sometimes it blends out better if you wet your paper first. And then sometimes it'll blend out better if you put your color down first. A lot of it depends on your paper and on your pencils. And then you can always go back. Once this dries, you can always go back and add more color. And that's not completely dry, but... We're going to go back and add a little bit more. There we go. Now, I will tell you, this is a pretty good watercolor paper. I use it a lot in my projects. But you can always get more expensive watercolor paper. You do not need any of your paper that you have. You never need to scrub it really hard with your brush or with your pencils. Always go lightly and then stop when it gets pretty saturated. Because if you don't, you're going to rub a hole in your paper. There's not any paper out there that I know of that's going to stand up for you just continually rubbing and scrubbing on it. You have to kind of have a light hand and you know just go at it lightly and go at it in layers so if you don't get it dark enough the first time then go back with another layer but just when you get it pretty saturated you need to stop and let it dry don't keep fooling with it because if you do you're gonna have a mess believe me I've done it I have been there done that See, then you can also do like that. You can put one color down and wet it and then put another color on top and then another color up there and that pulls a little bit of that water through. The best way to learn on anything and I'm not just watercoloring but the best way to learn any project is just to keep trying and keep practicing. The first time you will absolutely hate your watercolor or what you've done probably. I did. <laughs> but it's just one of those things that you, you just keep doing. You keep on doing and you get better and better and better the more you practice. I don't think there's anybody out there and not even the most famous painter that started out perfect. 
So just keep trying and keep practicing. Keep laying watercolor down. Don't worry about what it looks like right then. Just keep laying it down. And if nothing else, just take your pencils and swatch them out on your paper. Take all of them and swatch out. Make your little swatch book so that you know exactly how they react to water. I do this in another little book that I have that's I call my swatch book. And then I write the name of the pencils on there. Ooh, that's a pretty color right there. Very pretty color. So let's see. Let's go over here to this side and do these. Ooh, that's a pretty purple. And then our black. All right, and then once you get them all swatched out on here, you want to take your paintbrush and you just want to put some water to them to see how they react. And see, that blends out really well. And that blue really smooths out well. I like that. nice. Now I'll tell you, I don't, I don't use black a lot in my watercoloring. It's just not, ooh, I didn't get it all out of my brush. It's just not one of my things. If I want a dark color, I just add my dark greens and browns and that kind of thing. I just don't like black on there. All right, then there's that green and see they smooth out pretty good even though they're not a very expensive watercolor they're blending out pretty well so you can try these and if you like it if you think watercolor is going to be one of your things then you can always go and buy a more expensive pack Arteza had some really good watercolors. I've got their watercolors and I really like them. I think I've actually done a video using their watercolors before. Oops, I don't think I got enough water on my brush on that one. There we go. My jar is almost empty of water over here. That blends out well. I'm telling you, these blend out pretty well to, to be a less expensive watercolor pencil. All right. So you can do that, and then you can see what colors that you want to use together and what colors look like they blend. All right, guys, that is the tutorial on this. I had promised quite a few people that are in our kit club that I would do a video on the water using the watercolor pencils and this pad. So there we go. I will continue to color this and then I'll trim this out and I'll use it on one of my projects. I love doing that. All right, we will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not a member of our e-club kit, the link will be below if you want to go over and join us. Each month you get a kit that has lots of different products in it, and we always give you something for your stash, a stash builder. So this month the stash builder was the pencils, the watercolor pad, and something else. Oh, uh, we had some... Um, some glitter drops that's a stash builder and a, a ink pad a tim holtz ink pad along with all of the other goodies that are in the kit so you can go down below and check that out if you'd like to and we will talk to you guys later thank you so much bye bye